Welcome. I'm Jim Plamondon, technology evangelist for Midnight Coders and its integration server, WebOrb. This is the first part of a two-part screencast. In this first part, we'll build a .NET class library and expose its single method as a remoting service using WebOrb for .NET. By the end of this screencast, you'll know how to implement a .NET assembly as a WebOrb-enabled service using Visual Studio, including the project references and properties. In the second part of this two-part screencast, we'll build a Flex client to invoke this .NET service over the internet. Let's start by loading the web page that summarizes the sample. The summary includes a description of what the sample shows, links to the sample's code, the running sample, key points for you to understand, and things to try for yourself. The running sample application is quite simple. Press the Invoke button, and after a slight pause, the string Hello World appears. This string was returned by a remote procedure call to a server-side object method. That's all it does. Let's bring up Visual Studio and look at the server-side code. It contains just one method, get Hello World string, in the class Hello World Service, in the namespace Hello World, or rather Hello Zero Server. This method accepts no arguments and always returns the string Hello World. Let's build this project from scratch to show all of the necessary steps and settings. From the File menu, we'll choose New Project. There's a C-sharp template called Class Library with WebOrb, which we will discuss in later samples. I have this template because, when I was installing WebOrb for .NET, I told the installer to install it. For this sample, we'll select Class Library. In the New Project dialog, we'll name the class library Hello Zero Server and click the checkbox labeled Create New Directory for Solution, then click OK. Before we start writing code, we need to change a project property. In the Solution Explorer window, we'll right-click the project to get its pop-up menu and select Properties. In the Property Windows Application tab, we'll change the target framework from .NET Framework 4 to .NET Framework 2. I'm doing this because my samples are all written for maximum compatibility, and that requires using the oldest possible version of the .NET Framework. If you know for sure that your service will be deployed into an environment that supports a later version of the .NET Framework, then your services can target that later version and WebOrb will work just fine. Making this change brings up the Target Framework Change dialog. Click Yes. That brings up a security warning dialog and click OK. Now we need to remove some library references which are unsupported by the older framework. With that, the project compiles. Let's look at the code. We'll delete all of the using statements except system. Selecting the class name 1, we'll refactor, rename it to Hello World Server and click OK. Then click Apply. Finally, select the class name, class1.cs, and rename it Hello World Server to match the service class's name. This is not necessary, but it makes the code easier to understand. Now, we'll add the method getHelloWorldString. It's public. It returns a string. It's named getHelloWorldString. It accepts no arguments, and it always returns hello world. We'll save the file and build it. No errors, no warnings. To deploy the service into WebOrb, we'll find the project's DLL in the project's folder, bin, debug. We need to copy these to WebOrb, so let's find WebOrb. On my computer, C drive, program files, scroll down to WebOrb for .NET. My latest version is 4.1.0.1. Go to the bin folder. 
Now we'll drag and drop the project's DLLs over to WebOrb's bin directory. The PDB file contains debugging information. It is not required that you copy it over with its DLL, but it's a good habit. We'll discuss remote debugging in later screencasts. This is an open, unsecured deployment of WebOrb on my local machine, which is convenient for development purposes. For production deployment, you'll want to use a closed, secure deployment of WebOrb, and we'll discuss that in later screencasts. Also, in later screencasts, we'll describe how you can use WebOrb's management console to test and manage a service's deployment. With this, the deployment of your first WebOrb-enabled .NET service is complete. In this screencast, we showed how to implement a .NET assembly as a WebOrb-enabled service using Visual Studio, including the project references and properties. In the second part of this two-part screencast, called Your First WebOrb-Enabled Flex Client, we'll build a client to invoke this service over the internet. Happy coding!